How I handle experience points and level advancement, today on Dungeon Craft. Welcome to Dungeon Craft. I'm Professor Dungeon Master coming to you from Dungeon University, and this channel is about running the ultimate game of Dungeons and Dragons. Level up your game by subscribing and click the bell icon for notifications. So viewers have been asking for a while now how I handle experience points and leveling up, so today I thought I'd put on my plus one vest of protection and share my thoughts. Players love getting experience points and leveling up. XP is psychologically important because it feels like the characters are progressing, getting somewhere, and becoming more powerful. Now, if you're a longtime follower of this channel, you know that's not true. Characters never really get more powerful because the monsters and opponents get proportionally more powerful as well. Nevertheless, it's important to think that you're making progress and that you have power because that's what incentivizes you to play the game. Carbon-based life forms love incentives. They love getting things, and that's what experience points is about. Teachers will tell you that little kids love getting stickers on their work, even sometimes when they're in high school, and everyone loves getting ribbons and medals and trophies. Why do we frame diplomas and put them on walls? They're just a giant sticker that says, I leveled up. So an XP system is definitely needed. The D&D XP system has always been one of the more abstruse facets of the game, requiring charts and calculators. Look at this chart from the first edition, cross-referencing hit dice with special abilities. Today's challenge ratings make it easier, but you still have XP thresholds and online tools to help you calculate experience points. It's time consuming, and to me, it's not one of the more fun parts of being the Dungeon Master. And look at this level advancement chart. Why the multiples of three, and why the sudden jumps? It just seems so wonky and arbitrary. I wanted my system to be completely compatible with 5e, but also usable by old school gamers like myself who think character advancement should be a little slower. And I wanted it to be simple and fast so the DM could figure out experience points quickly without having to resort to some online tool or a calculator. So without further ado, here's Professor Dungeon Master's simplified experience point system. For every session, characters get one to five experience points, typically four. They get one to two for achieving scenario objectives and one to three for overcoming challenges. An objective might be, I'm taking this from one of our recent episodes, Getting the owlbear head for Gustav the innkeeper, that's worth a point. Retrieving the witch's elven boots from the owlbear den, that's a point. Locating and liberating a group of prisoners like Munchburger, his wife, and their retainers, that might be worth two. Stopping cultists from completing a ritual that'll summon a demon and destroy the entire town, that's worth two. Challenges are anything that stand between the characters and their objective. A challenge could be a menacing ogre or a scheming politician or a trapped room. One is medium. It wasn't easy. Two is difficult. The characters took a beating or barely escaped with their lives, like the Manskinner or the Owlbear in my last two sessions. I'll include a link to those at the end of this video. Three is what I call Saving Private Ryan. This level is so difficult, multiple characters bit the dust. Now, I want to make it clear, I don't give experience points for each encounter. I do it holistically for the entire session, and the entire process looks like this. Wow, that was a close one, but you cut off the owlbear's head, bring it to the innkeeper for the reward, and retrieve the witch's boots. All right, everyone gets four experience points. Who's up for a quick game of Splendor? Or it looks like, oof, so the princess dies in your fireball, the living dead overwhelm the walls of the town, and your nation is plunged into a civil war you get one experience point. On the other hand, we're done a little early. Hey, who's up for a game of Splendor? This gets your players away from thinking, how are you going to kill everything, and focusing on how can we work together to achieve the objective. And it helps you as the DM because it only takes about 10 seconds. Now for my advancement system. You want a chart, right? You're looking for a chart. Well, you're not going to get one because you don't need one. All you need to remember is the number 10. When characters accumulate 10 experience points, they are eligible to level up. That's when you say, okay, you can level up, but now you have to complete your milestone objective. What's a milestone? I don't know. You decide. You could individualize it. You could say, okay, a rogue's got to steal a jeweled skull from the Merchant's Guild. Or the Wizard's Apprentice has to get a rare magical mushroom from the Forest of the Screaming Antelope. Or it could be a group goal. Go to the haunted forest and rescue the Sleeping Beauty from the castle guarded by the dragon. If you have really mature players who are into it, you can have them collaborate with you and come up with a milestone together. That's how Index Card RPG does it. Once a character hits 10 experience points, they cannot accumulate more until the milestone is achieved. The higher the character's level, the more epic the milestone should be. It might even take multiple sessions to complete. 
When you do gain the level, your experience points go down to zero and the process starts again. This is a great tool for the Dungeon Master because you're not going to hear your players say, Mordor, that sounds dangerous, screw that. Boromir could take the ring, he wants the ring. I want to flirt with elf checks, roll charisma check. So you could say, well, you can do whatever you want, but Mordor's the only way to get to fourth level. And instead of, oh man, I'm 50 points short of fifth level. Yo, we need to find a challenge rating two village around here so we can kill everybody and level up. You're going to get, please Dungeon Master, how can we help you? Is there a quest maybe we could go on that aligns with your story vision? Now, many old school gamers prefer their character advancement to go slower, especially at higher level. That's cool. If you want to do that, just change the number needed from 10 to 20. Or say, well, at fifth level, you need 20 experience points to gain a level. Or you could just make the milestones tougher. Make that cleric destroy an evil temple and build a cathedral to his god in its place. Tell that dwarf he's got to slay a troll in single combat. Make the wizard have to defeat another wizard of the same level in a spell duel. Now, if you play 5e and you think I'm messing around with the rules too much, if you look on page 260 of the Dungeon Master's Guide, it gives you some guidelines on how fast players should advance. 5e assumes that characters progress at a rate of one level every two to three sessions. This system does the exact same thing, only I round everything to 10, so it's just easier to remember, and you don't have to look up charts, nor do you have to calculate every single encounter and count every single monster. It's the same result, but it just saves you a lot of time. Now, if you have players who complain it should only take one session to go from first to second level, fine, buy them a juice box and say, this one time, it only costs five experience points. Thereafter, it's ten for every level. Then you can cut the crust off their PB and J's and replace your background music with the Wiggles. Now, what do you get for leveling up? Well, you get all the feats, powers, spells, whatnot. I cap hit points at 20. I do play with negative hit points so you don't die automatically at zero. People are always asking, what do I do about monster damage and spell damage? And the answer is, I just reduce it in proportion. So a fireball may only do 3d6, and a dragon's breath might only do 4d6. It's not about nerfing the characters. I want them to level up. I just don't want them to become unstoppable tanks with 100 hit points. I think the game is more fun when it's grounded and the characters are human. And combat against the dragon doesn't take two hours. People have asked how I handle proficiency bonuses. I don't. I don't play with them. If there's a room full of orcs and the difficulty is 12, the players could say, hey, we're fifth level, and I say, okay, the difficulty is 7. This system puts the master back in Dungeon Master. It's faster, it's simpler, it eliminates murder hobos. You can create an adventure based on political and court intrigue and not require the characters to kill everything in order to level up. It encourages the players to be collaborative with the Dungeon Master, and it gives you the final say as to when they level up. And most of all, it's a lot easier for you. And making things easy is what Dungeon Craft is all about. If you want more videos on how to make your game easy, check out these over here. Like, comment, subscribe, share the video so we can grow the channel. Join our Facebook group and tell us what you want to see in future episodes. This has been Professor Dungeon Master for Dungeon Craft. Thanks for watching. I'll see you at the table. And may all your rolls be 20s.